The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the October 25th wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We get to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I at just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here and more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone you can dial it in right now, 877-927-6648. If you can't get to a phone, let your fingers do the walking. You can send me an email, steve at tfn.com. Just simply in that subject heading, please put radio show question. And, of course, inside the tiger's den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Les Show. Right now, the Dow trading down 171 points, 23,270 is the print. S&P off 19, 2549. NASDAQ 100 off 43 points, 7 tenths of a percent to the downside. Russell off 8 tenths are about 12 and a half points. Semis are down nearly 2%, 22 point Rooney's out there. You've got gold up a buck. Silver is flat. Light sweet crude down 42 cents. Lean the charger to the upside. Dollar wise, it is Anthem Inc. up 780 or 4%. USANA Health up $7, 11%. Northrop Grumman up 6 bucks. Line Corp uh, doing the line dance up 14%. That's five buckaroonies. Carlisle Companies up five. To the downside, it is Chipotle uh, getting fried, roasted, and toasted. As Obi-Wan would say, that's down 15% with some decent volume behind it, 7 million shares. It looked to me like uh, Chipotle in the longer term is going to go head all the way back down to the lows in 2009, just making its way out there. Who's the hedge fund guy that uh, took a big, a long position in this? That is a stinger let alone a stinker out there. You got a KD Health down 12 and a half bucks or 28%. Lending Tree down about 12 bucks or 6%. Um, Tesla is off 11 bucks, about 3%. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. So what do you want to look at? I know, I know. Yesterday, you and I, we determined that the prior day's one-day rate of change was a one-day rate of change in the spot VIX index was a bounce, right? Not a bottom. And you were right. You were absolutely right to make that conclusion. We may have to make a similar decision come tomorrow. May, because right now as we speak, you've got the spot volatility index up, uh, up uh, trading up 11.5% uh, out here. Now, yesterday, let me come back to that. You'll see on this chart here, you'll see a number of blue and green arrows. Really just focused on the blue arrows out here because over the course of the last several years, uh, when we've had that one-day rate of change greater than 10%, we've seen the very next day either a bounce or a bottom. Typically, had, it had been. Uh, historically, it had been over a 48-hour period of time. It's just simply accelerated like everything else in life out here. And so um, now if the spot volatility index does not close above a 10% level, one day rate of change out here, then this is off the table. We can't utilize that strategy. But oh boy, is it a good strategy. Don't know whether it will be in place today or not. Now, of course, yesterday you concluded 
I just assisted. I just provided you with the uh, chart data. And you said, hey, Steve, definitely yesterday was just a uh, bounce. And in fact, that's what it's turned out to be out here. We knew that because of the spot volatility index trading above that 50 day exponential moving average. I got some e emails from folks that went out there and they took a look at. Uh, 50 day took a look at the S&P 500 took a look at the uh, price level that was trading at back in the 2008 2009 time frame when it was in the 50s 40s 30s out there and saw what it was that I suggested that you do as well and that way you will always be able to turn off the channel when somebody says this the VIX is trading at 10 or 11 or something and it's complacent it's trading at 12 right now I, Nothing to be complacent about as we speak. It's just the relationship between that and the 50-day. Why it works, I don't know. I just know I did the work on it to uh, determine that. It was interesting. I saw something on CNBC. That's blurb went through, went past my uh, screen earlier, and they were talking about a one-week 13% rate of change. I think there's there. I think there are little sneakers out there. I think they're listening in on our conversation. Why well, not everybody else listens in on the conversation? So what's taken place thus far in the market is what you anticipated, what you expected. You expected that also with regard to the spot volatility index because of the rising bottoms on a closing basis that began began forming around October the 4th, while the S&P 500 on a closing basis, basis was making higher highs. How often does that provide us with some type of retracement or top? Nearly all the time. This one is not 100%. But it is so close to 100% that you just simply don't ignore it. Now, that doesn't mean you exit your positions. You've got to look for other things out there or take things one day at a time, one step at a time. All the market is doing as we speak right now is as it was supposed to. And so let's go see what else it's supposed to be doing or what else you and I can go look for. Well, one of the things that we can do, because it's an extraordinary set of tools out here, and courtesy of uh, John Logan and his group, is go take a look at those TAS market profiles. Now, if we take a look at the daily market profiles out here, what we are going to see is that in the very right-hand side, that the Russell 2000 equity futures contract, TF is its label, got right down to a level of support, a significant level of support because this is a bullish structured box out here. So the Russell 2000, which had been on a tear, got up to a, uh, made its, uh, its high on October the 4th, the very next day, what we see is a brand new daily profile that's great because it gives us parameters those parameters being that resistance was 15 17 and change out there and support was 1480 and change the low today 1481 you gotta like that now this is a bullish structured box support should hold here this was a high flyer what happens if price closes below 1480? Well, then a significant level of support will have been broken, and then you can consider taking action. For those of you that want to go long the Russell 2000 now, or at the 14, what was it, 1481 level, that was your signal. Not issuing an order for you to go ahead and go long the Russell 2000. If you were short, though, the Russell 2000, that means now is your time to really tighten up your stop. Don't let your sphincter muscle tighten up. Let your stops tighten up out there. Significant level of support. Now, the NQ is trading below its daily box, so let's go take a look at what it's doing when we get back from this break. Steve Rhodes, TFNN. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, folks. Hey, change in game plan because we've got to go to the questions that come in. If you take the time to write the questions, we're going to take the time to give you our thoughts and their answers. And the first one comes in from Kevin. Kevin says, thoughts on daily and weekly GDX. Well, here's the first chart that uh, takes a look at that ETF. That's a uh, gold vector miners ETF out here. That's the uh, one to one uh, ratio, if you will. We could take a look at the daily, the weekly, and the uh, monthly chart out here. And you're gonna see the uh, market profiles. Of significance to you, Kevin, would be the mere fact that on a daily basis, uh, today, uh, the bottom of a TAS market profile has uh, failed to act as support. That level is 22.92. We're 22.73. I don't know. I do not know where price is going to close at the end of the day. But what we also can see out here with regard to the GDX is that it's also trading below the swing point from October 2nd. 47 million shares. You've done 22.5 today. Mathematically, arithmetically out there, we're about the same type of volume, maybe a bit shorter, but you never know what occurs at the end of the day. So if you close below the GDX, not you, but the uh, low of 2281, if you were to do it with more than 47 million shares out there, then what that would do is give you the potential for a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. If it uh, closes below that level on light volume, it still can't complete this pattern out here. One just is conviction, and the other is, hey, not conviction. No big deal. Now, in this case here, the GDX would be targeting the first level, be 21.22 out here, which would take you back into the July 10th swing point, which has 52 million shares. Should that occur, you'd be watching what type of volume is going on inside the GDX as that level was hit. That's the current message as of 1.20 in the afternoon. With regard to the weekly chart out here, you've got kind of a, a small wedged uh, profile that is formed. Uh, you're trading below the center of the box. That's 22.33. So you got 21.22. you got 22.33 as a number. And the monthly, not really providing us with a ton of information other than 29.85 is significant resistance. Um, simply because the center line is closer to the top of the box. We can see for many months now, because that's a monthly chart, price has not been able to get above that center line of 25.97. Now, that's the first place that I would start just answering that uh, question with regard to thoughts. Now, we're going to try to stitch together those thoughts because what else is it that I would be thinking about when trying to answer that question? Well, 
The very first thing that I want to do for you is to put up this chart here. This is the chart of the GDX up at the top, which was what Kevin had asked about. The bottom chart is uh, my correlation tool. We're taking a look at the correlation. Is it a positive correlation, negative correlation? Is it 50-50? Is it like 80-90, 95% of the time correlated? That's what that tool provides us with. Now, we're taking a look at the correlation between it, the GDX, and gold. You will see that for the most part, everything is above a zero level with regard to those bars. We do see periods of time, albeit very few, where those bars are below zero. What this tells us, confirms for us, it, 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 with certainty, is just how well directionally correlated these two are because this is a directional correlation. Why do we want to take a look at that? Because we really can't answer the question with regard to what is it that we're thinking about the GDX without then going and taking a look at gold. So let's go take a And if we're going to take a look at gold, you know that we have to make a first stop where? Our first stop has to be the yen. So when we go take a look at what's going on with the yen, because this is the key out here, we can see that this yen futures contract, same thing with regard to the currency pair, it has been in this nice rectangular consolidation. No idea whether it will be broke. It is trading into an area, the bottom of that consolidation, where previously bulls have stepped in. At 1.22 in the afternoon, the current candle session is a piercing candle. The last time we saw bottoms down here, you had a little bullish engulfing candle. You had a little bull sash candle. You had another bullish engulfing candle out there. Bullish engulfing a stronger candle than a piercing candle. Piercing candle, the, today's session just needs to close at least halfway or higher into yesterday's session. At the moment right now, it has done that. Bullish engulfing would be... Um, much better confirmation, potential confirmation, that the consolidation is going to hold. If the yen futures pull back, we get no bullish candle out here. It's uncertain, or at least you don't have any confirmation that price wants to hold this area. You close above Stevie's red line in this, and that's at about uh, 0.8846 as we speak right now. That would be fairly positive. So, in order for, if you're asking, is it possible that the GDX could find a bottom because of the correlation that exists between gold? Well, you've got to find the bottom here in the end futures. And what happens if the end futures go ahead and bust through this consolidation? Well, all holy heck will break loose. Now, that 2120-ish area, uh, that will be a foregone conclusion inside of the GDX. I don't know what's going to happen here with regard to the end futures. Maybe somebody else out there does. For me, I like to go ahead and see confirmation. Confirmation would first be the bullish candle. The second piece of confirmation evidence would be price getting above Stevie's red line. We're not there just yet. So, Kevin, I hope that that helps you with regard to what it is are my thoughts on the GDX. We also had a question that came in here from Tom. Haven't heard from Tom in a while, so Tom, nice to hear from you. Hopefully you're having a nice uh, fall out there. Uh, you sent down your cold weather, so I'm actually having to wear the wool socks. I think it might be in the high 60s, upper, lower 70s today. That is basically downright frigid for those of us that live here in the uh, south. Uh, Tom wants to know you don't really give it. Or, yeah, yeah I, I won't complete that sentence, but you, you could complete it for me. It says, I'm long TVIX at 876 and wondering if I should close it out, close out the trade today with VIX being up almost 14%. Uh, um, you know, your thinking is, is really spot on out there. Uh, so how do we help you to answer that uh, further? Uh, so it's the uh, TVIX. Let's go take a look at here. Let's go back to those three pages, although I would highly not be wanting to rely necessarily in this instrument here on what the uh, TAS market profiles might be throwing out at us. Um, I, I always love this chart here, the chart that says, hey, this is a great trading vehicle. That's the monthly chart out there that because of all of the reverse splits says that at one point in time that this thing traded for, let me see if I can get it right here. 
$11,474,997.50 per share out there, which we know is not the case. So Tom's doing it right with regard to being a day trading type vehicle. And hey, congrats to you. You're in at what, 876? It's trading at 1044 right now. Um, you know, that is a beautiful thing. That is a beautiful trade. But how are we going to, I would say, a couple different ways that you could pay attention to this trade. Spot volatility index closes with a 10-day, a 10 a one-day rate of change of greater than 10%. Probably a decent reason for you to go ahead and close it. Uh, what else would you want to look for? I'd say you'd also be, since it's based on the S&P 500, and for me, the better information comes from taking a look at the ES Mini, I'd be looking for patterns inside of the ES Mini. So, Tom, you and I, when we get back from this breakout here, let's go take a look at the 30-minute ES. Let's see if we can figure out anything to assist you in that trade. That being long, TV, I In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com <laughs> Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're uh, taking a look at the uh, question that Tom sent in, asking really about the uh, the uh, TBIX. That's the ETF that he's trading for that uh, for the uh, for the for the uh, futures contracts for the two futures contracts inside of the uh, volatility 
futures contracts out here. Uh, so I'm going to give you a couple things for you to consider. Uh, with regard to where the ES Mini closes today, I said we'd take a look at that. You had a brand new profile that formed this morning. And the bottom of that box is priced at uh, 25.49. So if price at 25.49.50, basically, if price closes above that, then support will have held. That's actually a bullish structured type box out there. If price closes above that, support will have held. That will be one piece of information to say, yeah, you ought to sell it, or at least take some percentage of your profits on that trade off of the table. So that would be one thing. Another thing, if you had access to this tool, you'd want to be looking at what is the market breadth on a daily basis doing for the S&P 500. It has not yet crossed over. That's the green, the red line crossing back above the green line out here. Now, there are times where this wiggles up and down, um, but that's just part of trading. You know, you know, you can have like kind of tight stops to get in, get out, so to speak. So, but this still has the bullish bias. So, if this has a bullish bias and price holds support in the ES Mini out there, that would be another reason to say, um, okay, I might as well take my gains on that trade out here. Um, I can only tell you what the reading is at 131, and that reading right now is things remain bullish market breadth wise from a daily perspective for the S&P 500. If I switch over and take a look at the weekly charts, the week is not over. It's only wonderful Wednesday. But when price broke through support on the NQ earlier, it went right smack dab where it should have gone, which was the top of its weekly box. That is panel number two. That price point is 6,004. The low today was 6,011. So it didn't get all the way down there. But for goodness sakes, it's a $6,000 instrument out here. It did what it was supposed to do. If this is trading above that level, not that this has anything to do with spot volatility index, but trying to put together other pieces of the pie out here. Yeah, that says go ahead and take your profit and you know deal with something uh, that, that, that that's just really that's just what it says to me out here if we go back into the es mini something else for you to consider if we take a look at what it's done on a 30 minute basis it's completed an a to b equals cd to the downside about the one to two variety out there and for those of you that own the book the art of timing the trade which many of you do in fact you have a nice personalized autograph from tom you'll know somewhere in that book i can't tell you what page but if you go find it what you will see is when the market does a one to two a to b equals cd typically something else occurs well in this case Case here we also have a seventh wave move letter G on my system in that C to D leg and you did have hey there's another piercing candle we were talking about that with regard to the uh, yen futures contract here you could see it live on a 30 minute basis now in the 30 minute chart we have a completed A to B equals CD another price point for you to consider is if price closes above 2551 on a 30 minute basis out here that'll be back above Stevie's red line any A to B equals CD is typically going to happen 0 0.382 0 0.618 0 0.786 I'll move all the way back up to the top out there uh, as your four different type options. So watch 2551. You close above that, that says, yeah, probably I ought to take my profits out there. So I hope, Tom, that that helps you out. It kind of bleeds right over into the question here from, uh, who was that from? Give me a second here. Uh, I think it was James, maybe it was it? Yeah, it was James. And James' question, similar but different, was, hi, Steve, uh, would you buy or be long the diamonds right here? And that was just as of a few minutes ago. So if we're going to go along the diamonds, we're going to basically say, in essence, to Tom, hey, close out that trade out here. Now, with regard to the uh, Dow Equity Futures contract, we saw the ES Mini formed a nice little bottoming A to B equals CD in a bullish reversal signal. I don't have that yet inside of the uh, Dow. We might get it on this candle signal, which doesn't end till 2 p.m., but um, because that may turn into a bullish reversal signal. But I just don't have that as we speak at the moment. If we did, and you were to see, uh, you'd like confirmation price would have to close above 23,286. That's about another 50 points higher to give you a confirming message on the 30-minute profile. But if you are looking from a long-term standpoint to add to your portfolio with regard to the diamonds. You're not worried about trying to trade this thing. If you have, if you believe that the Dow is going to be priced higher at the end of the year, we're going to say Christmas, versus now, 
then this is a place to go ahead and start adding to or beginning that position. Why do we say that? Well, at this stage of the game, when we take a look at the daily chart, price just simply pulled back to Stevie's red line. And that has acted as support. So, again, it really depends upon your long-term view, uh, giving it a, a wide enough stop out here. All that has occurred thus far when we take a look at the Dow is price just coming back to support. The daily charts in the S&P 500, market breadth still positive. Nothing bearish there. We take a look at what's going on inside the Dow, the YM out here. Price is coming right back to Stevie's red line and testing it out here. Now, if it closes below it, well, you might be able to buy it at a bit cheaper price. So what do you do? I say, James, you just simply consider scaling in on the trade out there. Now, look, I can show you a... Now, why would what would be another reason? Just come up with one more reason, even though we probably come up with a handful of more reasons. What is another reason for us to go ahead and consider the long position? Well, I'm just going to have to keep you there with bated breath because we've got a caller on the line. We've got Sam from San Jose, California, and he wants to know about AMD. Sam, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? How are you? Sam, can, can you hear me? Yes, Steve, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing well. So now tell me about the 100-degree heat you guys had out there yesterday. What's going on? Yes. <laughs> I know it's pretty unusual, right, for, for the month of October. Yeah. You know, next week, next week I'm going to be uh, – I've got a uh, – We've got a wedding that I've got to uh, go to out in California, so we're going to take a little extra time. I'm going to go to the wine country. I'm going to go down to uh, Pebble Beach, and uh, so I just uh, turn. I just I, I put the I put those locations where I'm going to be on my phone to see what the weather was like, and I could have swore I said there must be something wrong. How can it be 100 degrees in Napa Valley? Although they did have the fires out there, and how can it be that same temperature down you know San Jose Monterey? And then when I watched the the World Series game last night, they came out and said, yeah. It was 100 degrees out there. But it looks like that is going to dissipate. Now I'm going to be dealing with 50s and yeah, 60s. Yeah, yeah, it's cooling off next week. Yeah, yeah. Well, in any event, we didn't call to talk. We didn't call to talk about that. But uh, you wanted to take a look at uh, AMD. So tell us what you're doing, how I can help you. So um, I, have, I have a fairly good position in AMD uh, starting at 1250. Um, okay. And, and I added... Uh, to the position, you know, at 14, uh, I know the stock has pulled back a lot today, so I was wondering, you know, what to do with it. So it, you're you're taking kind of a longer term view on AMD, or kind of give me your thoughts on, yeah. you know, because you had it at 12, you've added some at 14. So give me the longer term strategy, Sam. Yeah, I, I, I have a longer term view on it, uh, uh, keeping it you for know the what? next six to 12 months. Oh. Okay, hold hold that thought. We're going to go to break. We come back. We will uh, figure out, try to figure out what uh, Advanced Micro Devices is doing. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll okay. be right back with Sam in San Jose. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade C H A U or C H A D. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan 
Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Folks, so uh, we're on the line with uh, Sam in uh, warm San Jose. Hey, uh, Sam, are you a uh, San Jose Sharks fan? Uh, well, uh, I am, but uh, I'm uh, more of a like a Warriors fan. A Warriors, okay, okay, good, 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 good deal. Um, so let's go back to AMD out here, and you've got a longer-term perspective on it. And when we take a look at the uh, chart out here, and you take a look at the longer term, AMD at one point in time back in March of 2006 was priced up at the uh, 4270 level. Right now we're at 1263, so we kind of understand uh, maybe targeting where your where your thinking is on the longer term. Um, what you need to see this really do is get above the February, the month of February 2017, that high of 1555. Now, that had 1.5 billion shares out here. And you pushed, or this equity pushed into that high in July, so just a couple of months ago, with 1.7 billion shares. And it was unable to close above that. 1555 also happens to be the top of its uh, monthly TAS market profile. That profile itself has a bearish structure to it. It says because it has a bearish structure, if you couldn't bust it to the upside, this could bust it to the downside in 863. So if you're going to hold your position and price gets down to 863, I don't know that it will, but it has that opportunity. That would be a place where you would also want to go ahead and consider perhaps adding to that position. But price was not able to bust out of the highs out there when it was pushing up there with volume. What's really going on when you and I take a look at this equity here is this has been trading in a consolidation. Really, I'd say it began last year in December, December 8th, I would say. Now, we didn't know at that time that that was going to be the consolidation. But because that session, in essence, was tested a couple of different times, once on January 18th, another time out here on May the 3rd, that's in the price area of 980. So that is where this is trading, is between 980 and the 1550-ish type range out here. Yes, you have volume coming out of it on a daily basis here. So... Uh, I'd say if price gets uh, below about 1170, 980 is probably the area where this would head to. So you're really in this instance for this equity, just in a consolidation. And so your best areas to add are 980. Your best areas to sell until it can break out is really the 1550 area. That's what I see at the moment. What questions uh, would you do you pose now? Yeah, I, I, I think it has. I think it has got a pretty good support around the twelve, uh, between twelve and twelve fifty. So um, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, it will hold over there. Yeah, it, it should. The thing about it is that, you know, 
We talked about a monthly market profile. Here's the weekly market profile. You're trading back inside it. It too has a bearish structure. So uh, watch that 12 area. If it breaks through that, you would want to anticipate at least $10.34 um, as to where this would uh, trade to. So from the long term, my message is that what this is communicating to us is it's just a consolidation. Doesn't tell us whether it's going to break it or not. I'm a little disappointed in it that it didn't bust through it the week of July 24th when it was pushing into a swing point with volume. That week was 600,000 shares. Well, just slightly more than it was back in February, which was 578,000. So not enough to bust it up. And you know the expression, if you can't bust it up, you try to bust it to the downside. All right, my friend? Okay. Thank you, hey, Steve. Thanks. You, you're welcome. Thanks for calling. Thanks for listening. Now, um, before we went to Sam, we were taking a look at the uh, Dow Diamonds, and I posed the question, what else should we look at where it could suggest that a bottom had formed? Right? We saw the YM come down, test support, Stevie's red line. You know you love that because that is a great tool out there. If we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange out here, um, right now, I don't know where this advanced decline oscillator reading is going to end the day at the end of the trading session. But right now, it's printing out at minus 151. You know how much you pay attention to the minus 150 level. When the minus 150 level shows up on your screen, the hair on the back of your neck starts to stand up. Why? Because it is like Paul Revere riding through the streets of the uh, charts and says the bulls are coming. Doesn't say they're going to arrive here at uh, 147 in the afternoon or, you know, or 230 in the morning or but just simply when you get down to the minus 150 or, and it can be lower. It just once you get to the minus 150 level, the alarm bells go off. I don't know where the NYSE advanced decline oscillator reading ends the day. If it is above minus 150, well, then price can keep pushing lower. But if it's below minus 150, uh, we are at or near some bottoming level. So you're, you're paying attention to that, Stevie, red line on the Dow, equity futures contract. You're paying attention to the one-day rate of change in the VIX. You're paying attention to the top of the box on the weekly basis inside of the NQ. And you're paying attention to the minus 150 level out here. If you go back and you take a look at other times we've gotten down or it's gotten down to minus 150 or below, you've at a minimum seen some type of bounce out here. Last time was back in the August 9th time frame. Then again out here, you made a lower low in price and a higher low in the advanced decline oscillator reading, right? We looked at just the opposite over the course of the last week or so, and that set up a very nice bottom. That was the August bottom that formed out here inside of the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, you got a nice little bounce out here when uh, back in March 9th when this level got down to minus 267. Well, that's when you start to get into that major oversold area. Now, look at this. New York Stock Exchange is hardly a ways away from its highs of just two days ago. And the oversold level, I know that'll just blow your mind. Nobody, nobody will actually be able to believe that. But just you, just don't share it with anybody. Just because they, if you shared it, just like I'm sharing it with you, you'd think I started drinking at uh, right after my workout this morning. And uh, I have been drinking my green juice. But that's it. There's nothing in there other than cucumbers and celery and, and ginger and green apples and kale and who knows what else I threw in that concoction. But it was not what you were thinking. Yes, we are just two days away, uh, three days away inside the New York Stock Exchange from its all-time closing high out here. And yet it is, as we speak right now, down to, at a minimum, an oversold reading. This is an extraordinary bull market out here. It doesn't provide us with many opportunities to get in and buy. Yesterday, we went through a whole long list of reasons why what I want you to really do is get your head completely wrapped around the idea of where is it that you buy. So in James's case, you know, you don't have to go all in. 
you can have a longer term outlook like Sam and start averaging your way in there, keeping a, a wider stop on that. So we've got plenty of signals out here that say, and we just got to see what it is. The readings of these things are at the end of the day to assist us with that decision making process out here. The worse it is for the markets, finishes at the low of the day, someone might reach the conclusion that that's great for the bears. That is absolute BS. Because before Steve gave you all this other information out here, then you might have bought into that. But you're not going to do that. This market, I don't know if today is the low or right now or it came in two hours ago, but the Dow is going to be higher come the end of December than where it's at as we speak right now. Steve Rhodes with TF in it. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. If you'd like to be the bank and get the type of interest they receive instead of the low interest rates they give to clients, then I have an investment you may want to take a look at. I'm offering four-year secured first mortgages on billable city lots in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment can be anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000 per billable city lot. The interest paid is 7% per year paid monthly. Depending on the investment, the income per month per lot ranged from $175 for a $30,000 investment to $437.50 for a $75,000 investment. If you are in the CD market, you want to look at this investment. St. Petersburg is located in Pinellas County, which is the densest county in Florida. If you're looking for an investment with your principal intact that pays a good interest rate, this may be for you. The supply is limited, so act now. For more information on these secured first mortgage opportunities, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade Think or Swim is now at 11 a.m. Followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. folks so uh looks like the last question we uh may be able to get to is from john in uh, sarasota john says uh how high up can the uh, dxj that happens to be the wisdom tree japan hedged equity fund it's a good thing i only have to say that once but that's what uh, john is taking a look at and um part so let's talk about where it's headed to the as you know john the part of the problem is, is that 
you have to really understand the components inside this. For example, Toyota Motor Corp is the highest weighted. You got Mitsubishi, Japan Tobacco, Sumitomo Mitsu, uh, Mitsui Financial, Nissan, Canon, um, Honda, you know, Takeda Pharmaceutical. You got a bunch of different things out here. Um, I don't know which of those is actually the Nikkei 225 or not. Um, but with regard to how high up can this go, I would say at this stage, this is making a 100% move will move. And that is that it's trying to get back into the June 1st level. So very likely you're at 57.24. The low of that session for that month of June of 2015 is 56.94. You're already trading inside it. 107 million shares there. You're only at 40. Two million, so you're moving into it with light volume. Nonetheless, if the month closes out above the price level of 56.94, you're probably going to go at least test the high 60.28. Can you bust it out? Yeah, you can. If I really understood, you know, the holdings, we could probably uh, make a really good hay out of this. To the extent that these equities are part of the uh, Nikkei 225, which many of them probably are. If we take a look at the Nikkei, what this is doing as we speak right now, this is a monthly chart out here. This is busting above a swing point. That's the swing point from June of 2015. So this trades a little differently, just a little differently than the DXJ. I think that was the, uh, yeah, the DXJ out here. But this thing looks to me like over the long haul, this is headed back to the 37 to 40,000 area. So I think you are in the right place, my friend. It's not going to happen overnight, but it looks muy bueno. Thanks so much for being here, folks. Stay tuned on Wonderful Wednesday. We've got your favorite polar bear of mine, David White. He's up next, Tom O'Brien from 3 to 5, and I'll see you back here on Terrific Thursday. Take care, folks. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will Will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.